All right, so what we're going to talk about today is, it's been in the meeting quite a lot, franking credits. All right, so what we'll do, we'll, we'll just go through it and we'll, we'll compare it with, say, other investment forms. But the best way to explain these franking credits, right, is that we'll compare the pair. So we'll start off looking at interest, rent on a rental property, and then franking credits, so you can be um, well informed on what it all means. So say, for example, in this instance here, right, we have interest of, say, $10,000. Now someone has uh, you know, invested money in a term deposit and has received $10,000. So basically that's the return on investment. And if you're in a say 32.5% tax bracket, the tax would be $32,000. Now if you're a low income earner, right, 19 cents in the dollar, you're looking at tax at $1,900. Now to take this further, we'll, we'll, we'll compare it with rent. So when we're talking about rent on a rental property, in this example, we use $10,000 net rent on a rental property. So based on a tax rate of say 32.5 cents in the dollar, tax is 32.5 cents in the dollar. On a 19 cent tax bracket, tax is $1,900. So in this instance here, where we have rent at 10,000, and interest received, $10,000, the tax is the same. So when we look at, say, dividends, right? So dividends basically is the return on your investment of when you buy shares listed on the stock exchange or where you're a shareholder in, say, a private company. Now this example here, the difference between interest and rent is that your cash return is basically split. So remember, that return is split. Basically, cash you've received is say $7,000, right? And then you get this ta uh, tax credit or what's known in the media as franking credit. Now in this franking credit, it's basically $3,000. So that means that your return on investment is $10,000. Now that's basically based on if someone wants to buy these shares, they work out what the return is, and in this example, it's worked out to be $10,000. You've received $7,000 in your hand, and $3,000 has gone to the tax office. Now we compare that to net rent of 10, and your interest received of $10,000, that return basically is the same. But the difference that we're finding now, that's been in the media quite a lot, is this franking credit. Now depending on your tax bracket, will depend on whether you get, say, this tax credit coming back to you. So on this basis here, looking at these examples, on a tax rate of say 32 cents in the dollar, the tax is $3,200. Now this credit, when you get to do your tax return, basically will come off the tax payable. So in this instance here, $3,000 tax credit will flow through and overall, you get a $200 tax paid um, or payable bill. Now, where the issue has come into play is basically when you're a low income earner, where we're in the 19 cent tax bracket. In this example here, $3,000, the tax payable will be, say, $1,900 on a $10,000 gross dividend, but your credit in this example here is $3,000. So what's in contention is basically the difference, the $1,100 refund that you'll be entitled to. Now, in the media, and where we are at this stage, is that basically that's what's at threat of being lost. Now, if we compare all the investments and all the re re uh, returns that we're getting here, is, is that basically dividends with these tax credits are being discriminated against. And what I mean by discriminated against is basically uh, the level of taxpayer you are, whether you're a high income earner, a middle to low income earner. And being a low income earner is basically where you'll be affected. Now, when we compare, say for example, having dividends, you'll lose that $1,100. Now we compare it with, say, if your investment was, if you decided to hold your investment in super, say, such as an industry fund or a retail fund, this is where the difference is big time because what happens is that with this $7,000 dividend, 
that's received uh, with the pen or through the pension fund or your super, this three thousand dollars is actually kept by your super superannuation fund. So basically, that ten thousand dollar benefit is kept and it's not lost, right? So your super fund keeps that three thousand dollars and is able to use that credit and pass it on to another member where their super is taxable. So someone who's so, so basically someone who's in retirement and they've converted their super to a pension pain fund, right? And it's an industry or a retail fund, that tax credit is not lost. That tax credit is basically passed on to another member where it's utilised. And basically what happens there is that that industry fund and retail fund passes on that credit to you, right? Which flows through to your annual pension payment. So basically, in summing all of this up, is that there's a lot of infamous, misinformation going around at the moment. You shouldn't be discriminated on whether you own the investment outside of super or within. Now, if you own it outside of super and you're a low income earner, you're going to lose that, that tax credit. That refund is gone. That refund, I've heard people call it a gift. It's not a gift. It's your money, right? It's your return on investment. Now, if you had that investment in super, and that super was paying you a pension, that full $10,000 is paid to you. So what's the difference? There shouldn't be a difference. So basically, I hope I've explained this in relation to these tax credits um, and how useful they are in investing and how basically it does form your total return on investment. So if you've got any questions, look, feel free to, to ring me or to email me at john at shackergroup.com.au. See you later.